Good evening with the Digital 4G Sports Roundup. I'm Anne Marie Burke. Well, the West Indies women cricketers will be going after victory number three as they clash with New Zealand in tonight's fourth game of their Tri Nation T20 series. Well, let's head across live to Kensington Oval to check out the latest well, where New Zealand have taken to the crease the first. Squad, huh? And also, as you know, the Barbados Cricket Association also is involved in coaching the Barbados squad. So, you know, thanks must go to the support staff. Eh? Don't see Sharon Campbell there, but he is indeed the head coach. Ball. Yep. No ball from Tremaine Smart. It's going to be, if it's a front foot, no ball, which I think it is, of course, it's going to be a free hit. So an opportunity for Salaweth now to free her arms. A good call there by Gregor Bathwick. Yes, uh, she's way over there. I don't think there's anything to should be complaining about. So free hit. What will Satterwith do? Let's wait and see. Skies it. Might be caught, but it would count. The crowd perhaps not recognizing or remembering that it was a free hit, so they seem quite into it. Well, just one run. Yes, Barry Saddleweight, I think she had to go for it, even though she wasn't off the mark, she had to go for it because it being a free hit, no other reason but to just to, you know, have a have a dart. So as you can see, the early exchanges from Kensington Oval in that match between the West Indies women and New Zealand women, the score is now three without loss. New Zealand, having won the toss, deciding to take to the crease first. Now St. Michael's South East got a huge win over Christchurch South while there was a tame draw between St. Michael West Central and Christchurch West Central. That's when action continued in the David Thompson Memorial Football Classic last evening. Shane Jones has the action from the Parkinson Field. St. Michael's Southeast in red with the throw against Christchurch South. Glancing header, the bounce beats the keeper. 1-0 St. Michael's Southeast in front. Dwayne Williams with the goal. Chance for Christchurch South form the rebounded free kick. Shot from range, but it's over the bar. St. Michael's Southeast again on the left. This time from a corner. Jabal Hines nods it home. 2-0. Man in red on the attack again. Surely something's got to happen. Brought down in the box and the ref points to the spot. That's a penalty. Tyreek Highland steps up. Cool as you like. 3-0 at half time. The attack from St. Michael's Southeast continued in the second. Header was an attempt on goal, but Shane here would finish things up. 4-0 now. Not too long after that, Akeem Brown got in on the action. Decent finish. That's a hot five. Nothing at all for Christchurch South. Brilliant solo effort from Herewood and clinical finishing. That was his brace. And there would be another Damian Bill. Great piece of skill from him. Final score, St. Michael Southeast 7, Christchurch South 0. In the night's other game at Parkinson, St. Michael West Central and Christchurch West Central played to a one-all draw. Shane Jones, CBC Sports. And over at the James Bryan Complex, St. Michael North East defeated St. George North five goals to nil. St. Joseph thumped St. Peter four goals to one. And St. George South drew one all with Christchurch East. And over in Spitestown, St. Michael West got past St. Philip South three goals to two. Well, the 2012 Olympic triple jump champion Christian Taylor has been spreading his knowledge and experience, making the rounds to some local schools, inspiring the students. CBC's Marsha Boyce was in St. Philip for his trip to the Hildeskeen Primary. 
The athletes of Hilda Skeen Primary have been getting some good advice from an Olympic champion. London 2012 triple jump gold medalist Christian Taylor paid them a visit. The 23-year-old stressed the importance of setting goals and being prepared as well as believing in your ability. First and foremost, you know, believe in yourself. You know, because there's going to be so many people saying that you cannot do something. There's going to be so many obstacles and, and distractions in front of you. But when you get disciplined and when you get focused on a, a goal at hand, you know, there's nothing that can stop you. The students took the time to find out everything from its favorite music, food and hobbies to the more serious stuff. Like what motivates him to train when things get tough? There are definitely times when it's very difficult and there are times when it's also very hot. Um, but the thing is, you know, you have to work through all elements because like I said, there's going to be meets when it's raining, there's going to be times when you're down and then it's going to, you look back and you reflect on those times when you push yourself when it was hard and that's when the championships and that's when the champions are made. So it's the ones that push through when it hurts. And how he handles disappointments. I take it as a learning experience. Uh, that's one thing. Everything happens for a reason. And if, if you dwell on it too long, it actually will hurt your game in the long run. So I look back, we watch a lot of film, watch a lot of video. And when I look back up on what I did, and my coach and I sit down and we see what we did and, and how we can improve for the next time we compete. The Girlfriends in Sport Forever Club, a group at the school aimed at keeping girls involved in sports, delivered two renditions, including the school song while presentations were made to the Olympian and his mother Stephanie Taylor, a past student of Beulah Primary, one of the schools amalgamated to form Hilda Skeen. To mark the visit, Taylor also presented Principal Ivan Clark and PE teacher Janelle Denny with a special memento. Then it was time to get up close with the hardware, gold medals from the 2011 World Championships and of course last year's Olympics. Taylor was also scheduled to make visits to Lestrevon, Princess Margaret and Lodge during his time in Barbados. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. Three teams are now tied on four points at the top of Zone A in the Granny Adams International Airport T20 Cricket Tournament. Stout Scar Rentals have now joined Air Traffic Control and Fast Inc. following a seven-wicket win over ATC at the Rice's Plain Field. CBC's Melissa Farley reports. An early batting collapse, well, it was a collapse nonetheless through ATC's innings. The first wicket going with just nine runs on the board. Andre Roach bowled by Kimar Greenwich for two. Then Lance Hart got his first wicket, that of Adio Catwell, caught and bowled for one. 35 for two now turned to 35 for three. Captain Ramel Chase gone for nine, the second wicket for Lance Hart. Then with the score on 43, Greenwich struck again, two wickets for him as well. Ramel Hall, the man gone, caught by wicketkeeper Damian Payne. Jabari Yar stepped to the crease, but didn't last too long. He was bowled by Micah Howard for eight, 52 for five, and no change to that run score when Kimar Hart bowled Dion King for duck. ATC still in trouble. Carl Holder held some nerve with three sixes and two fours for a promising 30. But Courtney Clark eventually got his man, ATC now 98 for seven. Two runs after, which was the 100 run mark, Shane Freeman was caught by Greenwich off Ian Clark for eight. The ninth wicket then fell on 104. Roderick Oliver bowled for one. Two wickets went to Kimar Hart also. And then the final one, Kwame Bradshaw ran out with no runs to his name, ATC all out for 105. Now Stout Scar Rentals reply started shaky. Michael Howard went LBW on the first ball and Jabari Yard struck goal. He kept digging until he struck again. Lance Hart bowled for two, Stout Scar Rentals two for two. And then a vital partnership between Baggio Howard and Damian Payne started. It was an 83-run partnership that was needed. And then on 85 for 2, the third wicket, Baggio's one it was, bowled for 26. Payne unbeaten on 44 and Courtney Clark, not out on 10, took their time and crept to the low target on 107 for 3. Melissa Farley, CBC Sports.